Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Aiden Kosick and today I'm bringing you guys the first Royal Draft League Season 5 Team Builder video. And what these are is I'm basically once a week before each one of our battles the day before, uh, I'm going to be posting these videos kind of recapping our opponent's team and the team that I'm going to be bringing so that way I can show you guys uh, a little bit more of the set details so that way before each one of the battles you don't really have to get too much into it you kind of already know what i've brought how i've prepped beforehand what my thought process is kind of looking like so uh the first thing that we have here we have the first couple picks as well as uh let me back out of here uh the rest of her team we're going to be going at least i think it's a her i'm not quite sure 100 i should ask but uh we're going to be going up against the rockford swine nubs for our first battle uh storm who is going to be the coach for them and uh, she has drafted Aegislash, Sylveon, Alcremi, Jolteon, Charizard, Trevenant, um, going back out, uh, Type Null, Sableye, Stonejourner, a new mon, Mimikyu, and Vaporeon. So, um, pretty interesting team. Uh, I've talked to someone, a couple other people that have kind of looked at this team. I'm not quite sure what to expect. Uh, these two that I'm clicking back and forth on are really kind of my biggest question marks. I uh, don't really know what to expect from the Sylveon and the Alcremie. Uh, they both kind of do the same couple of things. Sorry, let me silence my phone real quick, guys. My bad. Yeah, I, I don't really know exactly why you would feel the need to have both of these when they kind of do the same thing uh alchemy dazzling gleam mystical fire uh recover calm mind that's kind of the set sylveon pixelate hyper voice mystical fire wish protect is kind of the set or calm mind protect uh very interesting but uh Aegis slash great mon uh you can use it physically or defensively, I know that some of you guys might be looking at these stats, but remember the defensive stats and the offensive stats do invert due to the stance change ability whenever you go from clicking King Shield to uh, going into offensive mode, which uh, Aegislash is probably my my biggest concern on her team. Uh, Jolteon being able to hit those uh, nice speed tiers, you know, as you see here, I was kind of looking at what its speed could hit. Uh, max uh, 394, Charizard's a good mod. Uh, not quite sure about the synergy with the rest of this team though. Typically you'll see Charizard on Sun teams these days, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, uh, you've got a second ghost type here with uh, Trevenant having that natural cure ability frisk harvest You can know, you know, you can run some cool sets with that um, Being able to burn a couple things on my team might be useful if I'm bringing uh, some physical sets uh, with it getting will-o-wisp uh, Type null really good uh, normal type. I mean it's probably one of the better normal typing mons, but normal typing is just really isn't the best. Uh, having the battle armor ability, uh, so I can't get lucky with hacks, no critical hits against it. Uh, Sableye, a uh, nice prankster ability. Uh, I don't think I have any dark type mons, but uh, we'll be getting into how we can block that uh, in a little bit. Stonejourner, power spot ability, pretty much useless in singles, really mainly a doubles mon. Kind of interested to see... What this thing can do i haven't really gone up against one but i know that it uh, has some fun options that it can use uh mimikyu being able to use trick room uh also a nice you know it has that speed tier where you can run it slow or you can run it fast uh, with the disguise ability unfortunately infiltrator from our dragapult does not break through disguise which i don't I, I don't understand why that's why you can't do that but whatever uh vaporeon another wish passer uh could be able to Render a couple things useless with Scald and uh, Ice Beam, but again, all the evolutions have kind of been nerfed a little bit since we're doing pre-home. None of them get Toxic or heal, heal Bell, so they really can't help out in that regard. But let's go ahead and jump over to my team, uh, which I kind of have fully built. I've played around with this team a little bit on the ladder uh, a couple times, had some uh, success with it. Also not had some success with it uh, against a couple people, but that is what happens when you bring a draft league team on the ladder which my biggest fault against me on the ladder was the fact that i don't have any defoggers no uh rapid spinners nothing to get rid of hazards however if you go back and look through her team she doesn't have any mons that do set stealth rocks or do set spikes or even toxic spikes which 
again was really quite curious to me why you would bring uh why you would draft a team that has no hazards when hazards are just too good to not pass up another thing that she has she doesn't have any defoggers or any rapid spinners aside from the charizard which uh let's just skip around a little bit uh rodom heat or uh easy bake rodom heat uh, running the Choice Scarf with the Levitate ability. We have Volt Switch, Overheat, Will-O-Wisp, and Trick on this set. Uh, we are running enough speed, 48 speed, I believe it was in order to outspeed a max speed Timid Charizard, uh, as well as packing Will-O-Wisp in case we want to nullify a couple things like Mimikyu, or if we would like to... Uh, prevent a physical attacking Aegis Slash, a couple options like that, Stone Journer. Uh, with it being, with it having these um, EVs placed and the nature that I have placed as long, uh, also with the Choice Scarf, uh, having Trick, we are able to live a couple hits from some things and render some things useless by giving something that might not appreciate a Choice Scarf the Choice Scarf. Uh, overheat's just always nice for stab, volt switch, good to get out of those situations. So overall, solid pick there. Uh, jumping back over to what I was talking about with hazards, we do have our Zeruzla, the Kaparaja, uh, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Power Whip, and Heavy Slam. Power Whip was pretty much to hit uh, Vaporeon, as well as Stone Journer. Uh, Heavy Slam, in order to hit those fairy types, uh, Mimikyu, Alcremie, and Sylveon do not want to take a heavy slam from a heavy metal Kaparaja, let alone a max physical attack heavy slam from Kaparaja. Uh, it's also going to be packing leftovers, that way we can get some nice leftovers recovery. And, uh, you know, normally you wouldn't really care about whether or not you want to run zero speed on this thing or not, but Zeruzla is not outspeeding anything on the team on her team regardless and just in case she would like to bring a trick room of some sort we really can take full advantage of that running the zero speed uh max hp with a little bit uh in spadef really not gonna matter there but you know you never want to run the less than the maximum amount of evs that you can possible uh jumping back over to our poison ivy this is a really cool uh tech that i was kind of hoping that i can take advantage of because one of the things that you get to use in draft league uh, you can run some kind of crazy uh, off-the-wall sets that I think would be a lot of fun. So my goal is, since again, she doesn't really have any defoggers, anything that wants to stop other than Charizard, which uh, our easy bake over here is definitely going to be taken care of, and uh, Sea Biscuit over here we'll get to in a minute. Um, toxic Spikes. So if we even get one layer of our Toxic Spikes up, anything that wants to come in on this does not want to take a Stab Venoshock even though it's uninvested, as you see the EV spread over here, becoming a base 150, I believe, uh, attack. Uh, yeah, nothing, well, not base 150, wow, math, crazy. Uh, base 140 on top of the fact that they would be poisoned, they definitely do not want to take that. Spikes, uh, in case Aegislash wants to come in, if we get up three layers, it's going to be taking 25% every time that it comes in which is uh pretty wild uh also running rest with the natural cure ability in case we get kind of low and we want to be able to use it a little bit later to take care of the alcremy the sylveon or the mimikyu you can just rest up and get right back out of there switch into something that might want to take a hit like zeruzla or even our sea biscuit so jumping over into sea biscuit oh wait and before we do that sorry about that uh the ev spread was uh 252 hp for defense, uh, 252 special defense in case we want to live like uh, mystical fire or you know anything crazy like that. Uh, yeah, jumping back over into our sea biscuit. Oop, I didn't put the nature on this. Brave, I believe. Yep, brave. Um, packing again, kind of the same thing that we saw here with our Zeruzla. And if you watch my draft analysis, you notice that I kind of talked about how these two do pretty much the same couple of things. Uh, max uh, physical attack 252 with the zero speed IVs again not really going to be outspeeding anything so if they do want to opt to bring a trick room team taking full advantage of their trick room with the stamina ability raising our defense every single time we get hit by anything with the assault vest uh, so that way we can take a couple of hits from a Sylveon or an Alcremie 
or uh, Charizard, you know, maybe it gets Sunny Day with a Solar Beam, we might be able to live that, Revenge Kill it with a Rock Slide, or with the Stamina Ability getting Body Press, such a good move, which does damage based off of defense instead of attack, having Stab Earthquake in order to hit things like Aegislash, and again packing Heavy Slam so that way we can hit those fairies for some super effective damage, and jumping over into our Toothless I'm saving the best one for last. This one's going to be a, a little fun. I'm hoping to take full advantage of it. But uh, jumping over to our Toothless, uh, packing Dragon Darts, Phantom Force, which is not the best ghost type move, but for things like Aegislash and Mimikyu, really does come in clutch. U turn for momentum. If something wants to come in on me, we can just get right out of there and Dragon Dance in case we get the opportunity to just set up and sweep because my goal this season really is to get as many kills with Toothless as I can possible. Um, we are packing the Cassib Berry or Cassib Berry so we can live any ghost type uh, attacks. Uh, we will live a Choice Band Shadow Sneak. We will live a Choice Band Shadow Claw uh, from Mimikyu or Aegislash. So all these things are great things uh, for our Toothless because those are, of course, the two biggest threats to our team. Packing the Adamant Nature with a max uh, physical attack, 252 EVs that is totally going to be hitting super hard. Uh, just enough speed so that way we outspeed uh, Jolteon because even if they were to opt to bring uh, Choice Scarf Jolteon, I really don't think it's to their benefit uh, because I could also just run my own Choice Scarf at him and hit them pretty hard. Uh, but even if they are, we can live a Shadow Ball from a Choice Scarf Jolteon, no problem. Set up the Dragon Dance and being able to just revenge kill right then and there. Just packing uh, 96 and Spadef since she has a primarily special attacking team, so that might be able to help out a little bit. And jumping into our last Mon, Mr. Carson, who, uh, again, I really, really wanted the NDD female, but having NDD male is no problem at all, especially with Psychic Surge, we do block things like Shadow Sneak, so our Toothless can come in super free, not even have to worry about them if they were choiced or anything like that, even if... Mimikyu likes to come in and it's your typical life orb set, uh, being able to live the first ghost type move, uh, hitting it with a phantom force or a U-turn and then being able to come back in later on and finish out the job uh, is something she just does not want to happen at all. And jumping onto the EV spread, we have 108 in HP, uh, 252 special attack, so it is going to be hitting pretty hard, and 148 uh, speed, I think it was just enough speed so it would be outspeed uh, like a jolly uh, stone journer, since I really don't know what that thing wants to do, I just don't really want to risk it, um, I think I might want to change it to being able to outspeed Mimikyu, but I don't know if that's really going to be to our benefit with this, uh, uh, cause Mimikyu's not really gonna hit us anyway, Shadow Claw doesn't hit, uh, Shadow Sneak doesn't hit, Drain Punch does neutral, and, uh, Play Rough, we have options for that, Zeruzla, Poison Ivy, they, you know, they really come in on those pretty nicely, um, but the moves is really what makes this fun, Hyper Voice for the Stab, normal type move, Dazzling Gleam, in order to, uh, hit the Sableye, uh, if she wants to bring the Sableye and try to prankster me and render some things useless psychic surge will not allow that to happen and we just revenge kill with dazzling clean uh mystical fire for the Aegislash. originally thought about a uh, shadow ball but the last move was really what makes this fun in prison because again like i talked about at the beginning of this video uh al creamy and sylveon really don't do anything other than have their standard fairy type moves as well as mystical fire in prison will pretty much make both of those mons useless because Sylveon's going to be packing that Pixelate Hyper Voice hit in prison. It can no longer click that. It can no longer click Mystical Fire. Same thing goes for Alcremie. It can no longer click Dazzling Gleam and it can no longer click Mystical Fire. So if we do get into a type, uh, tight spot, we will be able to switch in any one of the mons that we are bringing super free. Uh, we have enough on this bad boy, so that way a Phantom Force will kill both of them. Uh, it, it's just such a free move. Uh, to uh, it just it just it lends itself for us to be able to come in and click moves for free. So that is going to be super fun. And of course, leftovers for a little bit of recovery. Uh, thought about doing the terrain extender on that, but we will see tomorrow how that plays out. If I brought it or not, 
But uh, yeah, guys, that's going to be it for uh, this team builder video. Hope that you guys enjoyed. Uh, definitely be sure to come back tomorrow. Or if you're watching this and you started the video tomorrow and you're watching this because you wanted to get a little bit of a heads up before you finish the rest of the video, that too. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much. Peace.